Good morning. This is Will Schofield. I want to uh, just bring everybody up to date in terms of where we are in the Hall County School District on this uh, August 27th. It is Thursday, uh, our fourth day of uh, in-person schooling. And the first thing I want to say is, is thank you. Uh, thank you, number one, uh, to our incredible 3,400 team members who are uh, who are ready, who have been prepared, who have been uh, following our 200% accountability and uh, compassionately teaching that 200% accountability to our students in these smaller groups. Uh, it has been uh, certainly not a perfect opening, but it has been uh, as smooth as we possibly could have anticipated as again, we bring uh, over 30,000 people uh, back together doing life differently than we ever have uh, before. Uh, just a couple reminders that will help us continue to be uh, successful, that will help us continue to remain in school as this year passes on. Uh, first of all, if, if you're not feeling well for any reason, if you have an earache, if you have a headache, if, you, if you're any any kind of symptoms, uh, number one, don't come to school, but, but particularly one of the things is that if you end up uh, going to an urgent care and they, and they think you've got uh, strep throat, but they say, but we're gonna test you for COVID, please don't come to school uh, until those results uh, come back negative. Uh, I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, that in this day and time, one of the things that will help us stay ahead of this is the self-screening that we're asking everybody to do every day, uh, the temperature checks, and uh, certainly want to uh, encourage everyone, when you're going to err, err on the side of staying home uh, until all things are clear. That also being said, I want to tell you that uh, I certainly get uh, a number of emails every day uh, saying that things are going pretty well, but but for instance, uh, a few kids got into the building and said that nobody ever took their temperatures. Um, as parents uh, and as adults, I would ask us to have those conversations with our children. Uh, we have said from day one that uh, trying to get 30,000 plus temperatures taken every day will be a Herculean effort and we will come close. But until we get our students, particularly our older students, to take the mindset uh, not of, oh, I got past somebody and didn't have to have my temperature taken, but instead going and saying, hey, they missed me. Would you mind snapping my temperature so I can be sure I'm all right? Uh, we, we all have to take an ownership in this thing. And I would encourage uh, our families to have those conversations with our students. Uh, we can do this. We can do this well. Uh, we can be back in school and get back to a, a certain normal uh, sense of normalcy routine while we continue to cohabitate with this uh, coronavirus and certainly would appreciate help uh, in that area. Also gotten some, uh, some emails from individuals saying that uh, virtual is not equal to uh, in-person learning. Um, let me be clear, and we've said for six months, uh, we didn't need a pandemic to remind us that virtual learning is not equal to in-person learning. Uh, quite honestly, uh, I think that we are, we are building that capacity. It is becoming more robust, but way before a pandemic hit, we knew that virtual learning does not take the place uh, of a caring teacher uh, that is answering questions, that is there to, uh, to read those facial gestures when someone's not quite understanding, uh, to give immediate feedback uh, based on what is going right or what is going wrong with a student's work. And once again, we have said from the beginning, we can't offer everything virtually that we can offer in person. We have made a significant investment over the last five years and have doubled down on that in the last six months. Um, but, but make no mistake, we will do the best we can, but our virtual experience will not equal uh, the in-person experience. Also, I've had some individuals suggest, couldn't you extend the deadline so we can let this go a couple more weeks? Uh, let me tell you, that's not a bureaucratic decision. There's a reason that most districts required families to make decisions weeks ago. And that is because as we try to staff these classrooms, both virtually and digitally, it becomes almost impossible as we have thousands of students going one way or the other. And in order to ensure some sort of uh, consistency and some sort of uh, potential for people to man the spaces, uh, we're just not in a position to extend that beyond next Monday. I understand it would be nice if we could just let it be fluid and people go back and forth as they want to. Uh, we are just not in a position uh, to be able to staff two completely distinct programs with numbers going back and forth. So that's, that's just the, the reality of that situation. The other thing that we've gotten some emails this week is when you talk about uh, randomized testing, 
Uh, let me be real clear. First of all, we're well aware that uh, three days ago, the CDC said they no longer recommend randomized uh, uh, testing. Uh, also be aware that there's a number of experts that continue to say, until we're able to ramp up uh, random testing and get a better handle on asymptomatic individuals, we're gonna have a challenge corralling uh, this virus. We're told that maybe as much as 40% of spread is happening from the asymptomatic population. We also know that the asymptomatic population is highest amongst young people who often don't even know that they have COVID. And we continue to firmly believe that we need to get a handle on how much asymptomatic uh, COVID we have in our district. That being said, it certainly is always going to be voluntary. There will be paperwork required from the local hospital system uh, with parental permission before any child can be tested. And if individuals just say, not just no, but heck no, we don't want to be tested. We certainly have all the respect in the world for that. I'm just saying as the superintendent, I'm going to continue to move forward and try to get a better handle on where those pockets of asymptomatic cases are amongst our team members uh, and our students. So that being said, we've also heard that there's some uh, concern and it certainly is uh, well-founded about getting everybody together tomorrow, our first Friday, where we'll have all in-person learners together. Uh, I would say that I acknowledge that, that we have some anxiety also, but we also realize and will continue to state uh, that our end goal is to get ourselves back to students uh, whose families have made that choice to attend school on a daily basis uh, as quickly and safely as we can. And we feel like we are ready uh, to do our first uh, full day tomorrow on Friday. And we believe the processes are in place. Is it going to be perfect? Absolutely not. Is it going to be uh, pretty darn efficient and show that there has been months of planning that have gone into this? Yes, I believe it will. I not only believe it will, I know it will. I have great faith uh, in our people. So. So once again, I just want to thank people for continuing to uh, to wear face coverings. I was with a kindergarten class this morning, 100% uh, face coverings. Those kids are just uh, bubbling and excited. One little fellow raised his hand and he said, I was so excited to be able to come back to school again today that I couldn't sleep last night. And finally this morning, my mom just told me to go outside and play until it was time to go to school. But Oh, I'm so excited to be in school. Um, we, we are thankful. Uh, we are blessed. Uh, to be able to serve you, our community, uh, with public education. We'll continue to do our dead level best to balance, uh, number one, keeping our adults and our students safe, and number two, uh, having a full realization uh, of the importance of in-person learning uh, for a large number of our students. So thank you for that opportunity. Uh, keep the feedback coming, and, uh, and we look forward and we'll check in with you next week. Thank you.